This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to bigheadsmedia.com for more great podcasts. This week's episode of Bicurian, we had Linda Templin, Executive Director of RCV for Colorado, on to talk about how to get involved in a pan-political project. Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Aisla. And together we are the hosts of the Bicurian Podcast. Bicurian is our answer to the polarizing culture we live in. Tired of feeling under siege and looking for ways to get involved? Then come be a part of a different way of thinking. Everything from politics to geek culture to current events that polarize us as a society, we explore multiple ways of looking at things. Welcome to the show. Super glad to be here in the... We were just having a conversation and some uh, company that sent me an email, because that never happens, said something about... uh, 2020, in this year of our imminent demise, 2020. Yes, that's that's how it definitely is starting to feel. But we're firmly into the fourth quarter, home stretch. Maybe this whole thing ends when the year ends. I doubt it. But. And we're super excited to introduce our guest, uh, Linda Templin, the executive director of RCV for Colorado. Hello. Welcome, Linda. Welcome. So glad to be here. And the I like to say the beginning is near. Ooh. That's so hopeful. I'm glad so, you're here. Yeah. I need I need external hope uh, input right now. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, of course. These are strange times. I don't know if humanity's gone through something like this before because we're all so physically isolated from each other, and we are social creatures. Mm-hmm. The thing about it is, is, I think people we have, I and mean, that's a topic for another show. But if we have short memories, that's the problem. But yeah. We're very happy to have you here and Definitely. back. Yeah, and back. Good. We appreciate that. Um, and so one of the things that we've been uh, adding to the beginning of our show, and you're actually our second guinea pig for this, is a little bit of a, um exercise in uh, sharing what we are doing here at Bicurian. And um, one of the things that we started in 2020 uh, was a campaign that was highly hopeful, <laughs> and it's called Be the Change. And about weekly, I publish an article on Medium, and we release uh, it out onto the Twitter verse and other places with a suggestion of some sort or an idea for a person to take on and tr- and try for a week and then share with us if they feel like it. And some, sometimes people do, which always excites me, <laughs> um, about how they can be the change. And so we have a 34 or 35 so far published. And the one that we thought uh, we would share with you um, is the sixth one that we published, uh, which is called, we, it's In What Ways Is Life More Fair for You? And the the suggestion for this one is to kind of look at the world we live in and recognize that obviously we all have challenges that we're overcoming. And, and yet, in addition to the challenges we all face, Each of us has some advantages that are visible or invisible. And to encourage people, and we always do it ourselves as well, to take on what would it look like to spend a week kind of really seeking to understand what your advantages are. Because we often focus on our challenges and what we've overcome. What are my advantages? What are my visible advantages? And what are my invisible advantages? And especially with what we're talking about, we thought it would be a good uh, um be the change to share with you and get your thoughts on it. Oh, okay. Well, I have um, visible advantages because I can normal up pretty well. I can do the corporate suit. I have, you know, advanced degree from a university of Southern California. I have those going for me. Right. So I wouldn't say that's, that's fair, but it does give me the ability to punch up, Mm -hmm. which I enjoy. Um, now, my invisible advantages are um, that I'm kind of a little spectrum which is to say I'm a little slow on the uptake on some things and a little faster than others and other things. And you'd say, well, th- why are you bragging about that? Oh, no, I think it's great. <laughs> superpower, because laser focus is my superpower. Mm. Right? So that means that um, that I can work for hours straight on my own, just powering through something. And I'm just happy as a clam to spend three or four hours digging into some details. 
and getting some some uh, heavy lift items done. So there's that, and then um, and then I'm quicker at understanding some things than other people. So that's you know. So I try to dig into those things, and I have um, a trifecta of things that interest me. Uh, one is how we arrange the world we share together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love data and I love graphics. So, you know, the data graphics on ranked choice voting is, you know, I'm in hog heaven with this. It's like, here's the easiest way to explain how ranked choice voting works using graphic. Mm-hmm. So if if I could do nothing else, that's what I would do. So that's... Um, when anyway. I love a lot of the stuff that you've put out with RCV, so uh, it's nice to hear where it comes from. Yeah, so a passion. That's, that's my my nerd world. Yeah, I I that makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, so that's and that's what we're doing every week. We we put something out there every week ish. Let's be clear. Uh, <laughs> we put something out there uh, with a little description or some thoughts of where it came from it's usually inspired by a quote so I I reference you know where it came from in that way for people to just really for me it's about recognizing that there's it started actually with the saying that my um, former mother-in-law used to say which is a lot of people want to change the world but very few people want to change themselves and that's actually where the majority of our power to make a difference is is in how we move through the world and how we impact people and so it inspired this idea of saying, well, let's let's come up with 52 ways that we can be the change that we seek to build in the world and share them with people so they can try them on and see if any of them work for them. That's fantastic. And that's one of the things I've really enjoyed with this work in um, pan-partisan politics and getting out of my political silo <laughs> is going to places where... I would not have gone otherwise. For instance, I went to um, Western Conservative Summit a few years ago, and you know, I went through a side door, uh, you know, because I didn't want to walk past protesters I knew, and it was <laughs> I had the best experience. Now, some of the ideas being pitched there were were not for me, but it was amazing. It was, I mean, I feel like I was healed in some way with this experience going there and talking to people about how you use a ranked ballot. And so to say to people, don't you find that sometimes you feel like you have to vote for the lesser of two evils and you can't vote your values? And they're like, yes, it happens every time. Every time I'm shoehorned into doing something I don't want to do. And then I feel like I'm lying. And then I I, I don't like that at all, Right. And so I explained, well, if you use these ranked choice ballots, and they've been used in the U.S. for over 100 years now, you can say who you really want, you know, who you love, who you like, who you can live with. And you rank your choices that way. And if somebody wins in the first round with the majority of the support, well, that's fair. That's who deserves the win. But often we have people winning with less than a majority, and then it's not really clear if they have earned that win. So with ranked choice, what you do is you eliminate whoever's got the fewest votes and then you go back to those ballots, right? You don't eliminate those voters. You still wanna know what they think, right? It's, It's fair to include everybody. So you go back and you see what their next choice is. If they can't have what they really love, okay, what do you like? Mm -hmm. And the votes, you know, if there is then a majority then you have a fair winner. You just keep re- repeating until you can get a consensus on what people, the majority of people can agree is a good idea. But, and Yeah, I think it would end a lot of the polarization because right now, like you said, what ends up happening is kind of more the extremes end up being the ones who edge over the ma- majority m- a lot. Now, I wouldn't say all the time. And if it was more, like you said, a consensus, they'd also have more support from their constituents. Likely they'd be able to pass measures that were legitimately wanted, possibly there'd be more across the aisle work, you know? (laughs) Right, right. And so currently they are campaigning to their parties and to their donors. And the voters are sort of along. And what happens with ranked choice is that the voters have the power to hold them accountable. 
So they can't just say, well, if you don't like it, what are you going to do, vote for the other other guy? You know, they can't get away with that because you can have more than two candidates in a race in, you know, without worrying about vote splitting. So that goes away. So they become more accountable to the voters. And one of the um, unintended consequences of ranked choice has been that the campaigns become more positive. <laughs> it was just to be more fair, but it turned out to have the effect that the candidates have to run on the issues and reach out beyond their base and talk to the community at large and say, rank me number one. But if you can't, consider ranking me number two because I also care about these issues. So you have to talk about what you plan to do. Mm. Now, I don't know if you saw that um, they were billing it as a debate, but um, truly if I were moderating that de a debate, I would have dead mic'd them both. I mean, my goodness, it was not a good debate. It was awful. We didn't hear yeah, it was, I, you know, it was, um, it was not great. And you, I learned, um, you know, how horrified I could be, but I did not learn much about the issues or what either candidate planned to do. Yeah, my, was, my friend said that he's not sure who won the debate, but America definitely lost. Yeah, yeah. well, in, 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 all honesty, with the format like that, where they're not given clear, concise time to talk, how could we ever hope to find out what they're actually thinking? It's, you know, it was, um, maybe it's time to go back to the League of Women Voters, you know, and, and changing up the format and yeah, only they, have- They did a great on. job. I yeah. think they should totally take it back. So, and I admit, um, having you on was a bit of social manipulation because, frankly, talking about our CV in um, February, even if it's, you know, an, a sort of smaller election in Pueblo or something we were talking about earlier, right? It's not going to have the same resonance as having you on right now. And this is an important time for people to really be aware. And, and it came up for me the other day before I even thought about doing this show, because uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago that they finally decided in Wisconsin, I think it was, uh, that they were going to leave the Green Party candidate off the ballot. Oh, yeah. And, and it was considered this massive win, especially Wait. for the left, right? Because if they left the Green Party candidate off, they weren't going to split the vote. And we had a chance of unseating a senator in that place and, and, and all of these valid reasons. And I'm thinking to myself, I agree with that, which makes me not feel great, but that's how kind of desperate I feel right now. And I don't ever want to be in a place where I'm excited to have a candidate not on the ballot in some way, whether it's to serve our needs or, um, you know, just just we should be letting democracy work and legal battles to keep them off that the Democratic Party had to fight in that case because they knew it was just going to cost them valuable votes in a key battleground. Yeah, it's not a good look. It is not a good look. And it really it fails the voters because. You don't get to really have as many options as you should. It's not, it's not fair to put people into the corner, and nobody likes that. And even, you know, even people who are big Joe Biden fans, they still feel a little, little grossed out by it. Like, do we really got to, you know, play dirty like that? You know, so it's really, um, you know, the system puts us in a weird position and it's totally a thing we don't have to do again that's our unofficial slogan for 2020 is let's not do this again how about we don't <laughs> how about we don't no i agree well and i heard about instant runoff phoning which was a the sort of first wave of this initiative i probably 20 years ago and immediately was just excited because so often I feel like I have to make that choice between expediency and my actual values. And, and let's be clear, I'm aware no politician is going to 100% represent me or anybody else. Like there's always going to be some kind of compromise. Like that's, that's absolutely, and I think there's some beauty to that because my ideals work for me, but they may not work for my neighbor 
And so if we can find someone we agree on or and and that person can advocate for both of us, it's going to be better. Like I have my house inside there. Everything can be the way I want it <laughs> or my apartment or my car. Like most of us have some place. And if they don't, let's work to make that something that is true. But then in the public world, we we compromise like. You know, that's what manners are, right? Manners are the ability to be in public with, with other people and to not have to deal with one another's intimate habits. Like, so why not do the same thing with our politicians? Like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like they have to adult before they get into office. They have to be able to reach out beyond their base. Yeah. And if not beyond your base, you may not be able to pick up the second and third choice votes that you need to win. And that's how Jo Jorgensen got her win within the Libertarian Party, is that um, they had multiple rounds of balloting, which is very similar to instant runoff voting. Mm -hmm. And her um, main rival went negative. He just slammed everybody else and didn't talk about what he was going to do, just how bad everyone else was. And Joe stayed focused on the issues and kept asking for, you know, if I'm not your first choice, it's okay, but think of me as your your next choice because I also care about, you know, these specific issues. And she she built a win. Yeah. I'm going to take a minute and get philosophical here because to your point, like the campaigns get more positive. They have to focus on the issues. Um. Like, I think that's what's actually like, we're so far past the negative thing. You were just talking about like the, the other candidate went negative and the person with the message, not positive, negative, not slamming the opposition. But it, I remember a few years ago, it went to the skeletons in the closet thing. And then nineties, I'd say into the two thousands, it really started to become a big deal. If you could find a sex scandal or a financial scandal, you could just shut people down. Heck, if you won the, the, you know, caucus in Iowa, and you cheered too loudly to your constituency, you were immediately exiled from the party in any chance of running because you were clearly unstable. And now I look back in that and I'm like, wow, how do I long for that to be the problem? <laughs> but to that point, like, I think the, the American people didn't even care about skeletons in the closet. I dig them up on, on people all the time and nobody's hearing that. And they're hungry to hear the issues. But we live in a just negative attack place all the time. And it's obvious to point that to the president's, you know, comments and, and what's going on in that election. But I think it's just happening everywhere, too. Well, the problem right. is people can win doing it. And as long as they can win doing it, it's not going to change. And they're just going to keep better, getting better at doing it. Yeah. I mean, that's their skill. I get because I have a, a wide variety of like ideological curiosity. I get emails from the Republican and Democratic uh, Party. And pretty much all they keep saying in one way or another is that other guy is so bad. And it's just like, you know, that's a low bar. You know, I need yeah. to vote for you because you're not the other guy. OK. <laughs> it's, it, so, uh, you know, we're all in Colorado. Uh, Cory Gartner, Higginlooper race mm -hmm. is right in our face on the news and stuff. And, and all it is back and forth is just negative. Like Higginlooper did this. Cory Gartner did that. And it's, you know, and I'm like, you know what, to be honest, I don't even know who I'd vote for based on what they actually believe, because the only thing presented to me is what they obviously disagree the other person shouldn't have done. Yeah. And I, I think you're right. I think people are hungry for the issues. That's why I'm so excited um, to see RCV just having taken off and all the things that you guys are up to. Do you want to talk about some of the things that are happening, events, ways people can support you? Here's the thing. I'm going to yeah. put a pitch right now out. If you are fatigued about politics and you're feeling like it's like awful and there's nothing you can do if you get involved with rcv you can make a difference that's actually going to matter right i mean we can move mountains together as long as everybody picks up a rock and carries it and this has been my rock to pick up and carry since the 2016 election was so awful and somehow this one is even worse so um, yeah, we've made a lot of progress here in Colorado in getting ready for ranked choice races. Uh, we ran one in Basalt just this um, April when they were the epicenter of the COVID crisis in Colorado and it was just fine. Wow. 
people wow. handled it well. You know, it it worked out just it it worked out. So we're getting more things rolling with that. We have um, some legislation coming up this spring to expand rank choice to the primaries. So no more, you know, we had 150,000 votes go uncounted in the presidential primary because some of the candidates dropped out at the last minute after the voters had already mailed their ballots. Yeah, I so, actually had a few friends that had that happen. They were like really frustrated they turned them in early because two of the, their candidate was dropped by the time it got to it. Yeah, and that's a, a great thing to reach out to your representatives about because they really do care that, you know, you were actually, you personally were impacted by this thing. So we have this fall, we are on the ballot in Boulder. So it's uh, measure 2E for democracy. So the great thing about Boulder is that it's a city that is poised for change. They currently have their mayor appointed by the city council. So selected, not elected, which is not appropriate, especially for a city of that size. And they want to use the best method possible. There are people who work for the county who have run ranked choice in other states. So they are, you know, going to be ready to roll with this um, on their next, uh, they plan on rolling it out in 2023, but they're going to be voting on it this fall. And so that's exciting. So we've gotten, um, endorsed by the Boulder Daily Camera. And um, yeah, so that's that's gonna be fantastic. That's gonna move preparations along and help us get ready for rank choice in the, um, in the primaries. So we've got a bill for that and that's Representative Kennedy is going to be introducing that in, as um, in his first five that uh, a representative gets to introduce in January. So super excited about that. And we had, um, you know, we've got a, a, a nice broad uh, group of stakeholders giving their feedback in on this. So it's the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, Independence Institute, and League of Women Voters. It's the, you know, the whole crew is weighing in. And it's been really um, a great experience to talk about what we have in common, like the Republicans don't want to have the same thing happen to them that happened to the Democrats. The Democrats don't want to have that happen again, where they have all these votes go uncounted. So um, we had a webinar um, like two weeks ago with Representative Mark Roberts of Utah. And so they're, they are tied with Wyoming for reddest red state. And they've been using ranked choice in their uh, party elections for over 10 years now. They've been using it in a few of their cities. So they have parallel legislation to ours to use ranked choice in the primaries. So it's one of those, you know, make sure you know what the neighbors are up to. You know, it was a great chat to have and to get the whole, um, you know, Western Conservancy crew involved. So. Well, one of the things that I love about the ranked choice voting movement is that unlike many of the political issues that are around today, I mean, that have always been around, honestly, people are able to cross ideology and party. It's, it's, it feels like a measure for hope. And, and I get that it's a slow fix because we, we let ourselves kind of take a, take a long dive <laughs> and we're going to have to do some repair work around that as a country. We're all going to have to swallow our pride and, and take a step towards the people that we don't trust and, and, and do what we can to make these repairs so that we can remember that in the end of the day, we are actually all Americans. Like the president isn't, isn't elected to represent like conservatives or Republicans or Democrats or liberals. The president is actually elected to represent the country. And while the, the, the platform that they run on might be the one that gets first attention, it's never, it's never robust enough to cover all, I, all situations. Like there's always places for us to work together and learn from each other. And we just, it's going to take a while for us to repair that. But I feel like RCV is an opportunity for hope. It's a place we can put our energy that can give us the chance to remember that we're all on the same team, actually. Yeah. I mean, we, um, 
our handbook for campaigns is called Building the Win. It's how you reach out and build community. And, you know, because you may need those second and third choice votes, but it's all about that because, you know, these, um, even these local races can be really um, contentious and there can be people who are still mad at each other years later. You know, one of us would have won if only the other had dropped out. Okay, there's, that's not okay. Yeah, like I said, th that's the whole thing about leaving a candidate off, Green Party, whatever. This doesn't feel right. I mean, that's not what we're trying to do, I think, as 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 trying to move forward into a future where mm -hmm. we can express our opinions and and get rated on them and have a chance and people can feel like they can actually express what they might agree with rather than worrying about throwing away their vote. Because I mean, that's the argument that everybody's always made. And ranked choice is about not throwing away your vote, but not also having to vote against your beliefs. We're just starting with your compromise. I mean, once again, we're all we're going to have to compromise. However, if you could start with your best hope and then move towards your compromise, it also just feels better. Well, you don't have to give up before you get to the negotiating table. Exactly. So just like you have no power. And, you know, so let's say some, you know, you rank your um minor party candidate one and a major uh, party candidate number two. Okay, and what if your person doesn't win and your vote goes to the, the next choice? They can see where their support came from and they might start thinking into, maybe I do need to look at those policies. You know, maybe there are some liberty issues that really matter to people. Maybe there are some environmental issues that really matter to people. Maybe mm -hmm. I should look at what I'm doing. Yeah. So, you know, that's, and we've seen in other countries that have used ranked choice that they um, they have to govern in a different way also, that they have to work with the whatever the other side is. They don't have to um, try to score points all the time. Yeah. It isn't about that. Yeah, I don't want to put too much weight on this, but I do think it's what could save us in a lot of ways. Well, I think it would so. Just, I just didn't yeah. put that much weight on it, but... Much, but I do think it has the ability to to shift things in a way that literally everybody wants. I mean, that's what's been perplexing me. And we talked about it with our last guest because that's what he studies. Is he's he uh, he's the director of research for More in Common, and they they actually do uh, qualitative interviews and studies on uh, different situations and and Amer the American people, and and the reality is that. Nobody's happy with this. Nobody's mm. sitting here saying, this is great. I'm so glad everything feels hard. It, it's that people feel helpless. They feel overwhelmed. And they don't, they don't feel like they can do something. And that's where I feel like, you know, whoever we vote for president, not much is going to change. Because this, the whole situation is just a mess. But if we can get something like RCV across the country, we can affect a change. Maybe not this election, but... But over time, and and that feels like the legacy that I want to be part of building. Yeah, the beginning is near. We really are building a new thing here. So to kind of close out and wrap up, um, where can people find information? This will close the loop on my whole point of getting this in front of people. <laughs> and, and, a... and where should they be paying attention to? I mean, we are, uh, not, people listen, internationally, actually. Super cool. But um so where should people be paying attention to the RCV or how do they find more information about both Colorado and uh, U.S. elections? Oh, OK. So initiatives uh, around RCV specifically. I don't yeah, care about candidates. <laughs> what I'd say is Massachusetts has a state. Massachusetts and Alaska both have statewide initiatives this year. And then there are some uh, municipal elections in um, California, Minnesota, and here in Colorado. So, um, and then they're working towards a statewide initiative in Minnesota in 2021. And we're getting there as soon as we can. We're hoping to be right on Minnesota's heels. We'll see what happens, but we uh, are very much looking forward to having a statewide initiative here in Colorado for ranked choice. So if um, people were like, wow, what do you need from me right now to make 2021 have a Colorado statewide RCV initiative? 
well, okay, so more likely 2022, but yeah, yes, I'm I'm, to make- I'm gonna push it, but let's say right like as soon as possible. What do we need? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so rally up at RCV for for Colorado.org. Just even getting on our email list. That means when we talk to legislators, we can say, well. There's 500 people in your district who are on our monthly newsletter, and they have a question about where you are on this. Suddenly, they have time for coffee. Suddenly, right. they have to meet. So even, you know, we and we, so there's that. We have volunteer opportunities on the website, so you can sign up. And then, you know, the uh, sign-up form kind of asks about your skills and interests. And... Um, Let's see. And then we're also doing uh, fundraising to make sure that we can, you know, put out the videos and put out the materials that people need to understand what it is and how it works. Mm-hmm. You can um, bring rank choice to your organizations, to your HOA, to your, you know, church. Get people a chance to try it out. So I'm going to highlight something here. Um, you need to give RCV for Colorado like 10 bucks right now. And like help them to be able to get this information out and to actually think about it. All of these candidates, I get emails every day. They're like, you failed to match my blah, blah. Every time you get something like that and you think, gosh, I want to make a difference. Donate to RCV. Things will be better. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, and every time you uh, have somebody tell you, you have to vote a certain way, tell them to donate to RCV. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> well, we'll post links to everything so people can find it. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I feel like we're all COVID exhausted, election exhausted, and and this sort of thing still feels important. So, you know, even if if it is the home stretch, but uh, we really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. It, it's really nice to talk about something that feels hopeful. It's it's my absolute pleasure. This is this is the rock I carry along. You know, it's my moving the mountain, and it's been my uh, connection to sanity through all of this. So, uh, whatever I can do to spread that, thanks for helping me, and thanks for having having RCV for Colorado on. Absolutely. And on that note, we'll say thanks for listening. If you have ideas, feedback, thoughts, please find us on social media. We are by Kirian on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or if you want, you can give us a call at 303-578-8185. Oh, I think I read that number wrong. 9185. I, 9185. I, have, the wor- I have the worst handwriting. Sorry, or, guys. Or email us at podcast at com. <laughs> and if you like what we are doing, please rate us on your listening platform of choice. Thank you. Thank you.